Hi, so this question is about a valvular disease and the symptoms and signs associated with that. So um, a 78 year old woman is admitted with heart failure. So heart failure, that is quite significant and that's something that we need to underline. Um, she's 78. The underlying cause is de determined to be aortic stenosis. Which sign is most likely to be present? So we've got pleural effusion on chest x-ray raised JVP, bilateral pedal edema, bivasal crepitations, and AF. Okay, so if I just go through um, the steps that happen in aortic stenosis, we would be able to answer this question. Um, so, okay. So in aortic stenosis, you will have um, basically the valve, the aortic valve will be stenosed, so it will narrow so you would have increased ventricular pressure okay so the so the pressure would increase now this increase in pressure would cause a backlog of blood in the lungs and that will give us um the clinical sign of pulmonary well it will give us pulmonary edema um, and later on it's something that will show up as edema on um on a patient so for example swollen legs now, this pulmonary edema will cause bibasal crepitations. And if you auscultate, um, usually at the lung basis, you will hear um, signs of these crepitations. Now, the backlog of blood in, in the lungs um, will cause the pulmonary edema, which will then um, obviously cause a fluid to, um, you know, to enter the lungs and the fluid will become eventually she will show up as a pleural effusion on a chest x-ray if the backlog continues um into the right heart right side of the heart then this will um, result in cold pulmonale which is basically just right-sided heart failure and that will increase the jvp and it will also cause bi um, bilateral pedal edema now if we go back onto this one to the answers so pleural effusion will be something that will happen later on and it's not something that will happen as quickly um, so we can rule that one out we said that raised JVP is something that is usually a last step so that's when the backlog of blood over a certain time of a certain period of time will um, continue and it will eventually cause right-sided heart failure which will cause um, a raised JVP and also bilateral pedal edema. So that's something that you would see in right-sided heart failure. Now the AF. AF can happen in aortic stenosis, but it's something that isn't really, um, it's not something that is common in uh, aortic stenosis. It's something that's more common in uh, mitral stenosis, which is something that we will cover later on. So the first clinical sign you will see uh, in this patient um, would be bibasal crepitations. So we would, we would hear bibasal crepitations in her lung bases and um, eventually with time that will cause um, things like bilateral, sorry, that would, so after bibasal crepitations then we would have a pleural effusion on chest x-ray if the um, continuation of, you know, blood um, continues the back up and um, that will eventually cause right-sided heart failure, which will result in um, us observing a raised JVP and also bilateral pedal edema. Okay, so if we go on to some symptoms of um, aortic stenosis and some symptoms of mitral stenosis, so a little mnemonic that I like to use for the symptoms of aortic stenosis is a SAD. Um, that sounds very sad, but it works, trust me. So syncope, so dizziness, for example, they would have anginas, that would be pain in the um, central chest area, and dyspnea, which is just basically a fancy word for shortness of breath. So aortic stenosis is SAD. And then the next one is... Um, 
mitral stenosis. So with mitral stenosis, again, I've made a very, very, very silly um, mnemonic, but honestly, it works. Um, so for this one, I have made a mnemonic, mnemonic, um, Felicity hates um, oxygen and uh, sugar. It works. So don't judge me. So mitral stenosis. So we've got um, a fatigue, hemoptysis, which is just bringing up blood, edema, angina and AF, and then shortness of breath and syncope. Now, if we just go on to AF, and we can just have a little discussion on AF. Um, there's a mnemonic that I found which is quite useful um, for the causes of AF. So if you want, so if you're asked in an exam question to list the causes of AF, um, you can use the mnemonic PIRATES, which works really well. And what it is, um, the P stands for pulmonary embolism, so PE, and then we've got ischemic heart disease, rheumatic valvular disease, so anything that is related to um, the valvular disease um, and that has rheumatic link to it, it's always going to be um, your mitral stenosis and your mitral regurgitation, so it's your mitrals um, that are affected with rheumatic valvular disease. We've got anemia, age and alcohol. We've got thyroid disease, so hypothyroidism. We've got an elevated um, blood pressure, so that would be hypertension. And then we've got sepsis, surgery, and sleep apnea. Now, if we just go on to the heart murmurs that you would hear in um, any valvular disease, so your mitral stenosis, your mitral regurgitation, aortic stenosis, and aortic regurgitation. So the mnemonic you can use for this one is um, Miss Arden. So... Your MS stands for um, mitral stenosis, and then you've got your AR, which is your aortic regurgitation, and then we've got a D after the R, which is diastolic. So you would hear a diastolic murmur for mitral stenosis and aortic regurgitation, and that will leave you with systolic. So in systolic, you would hear a murmur in mitral regurgitation and aortic stenosis. That's the end of this video. I hope it's useful. Thank you for watching.